Ettinger. We'll call our meeting to order tonight. Roll call, please, Renata. Ettinger. Evans. Here. Gukin. Yep. Miller. Here. English. Here. McEvers. Let's rise for the invocation. We have Pastor Jim Williams from the Emmanuel Baptist Church. Thank you. Would you please join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the abundant blessings you pour out upon us each and every day. Father, for the freedom we have in this great nation. Father, you tell us in your word that we as citizens should obey the governing authorities because you've established them to provide for peace, order, and justice for our society. So tonight, Father, we lift up the various levels of authority who are present here, Lord, especially lift up our mayor, our city council, Father, and the agenda that's set before them, Lord, that you graciously provide them with abundancy of wisdom and discernment to determine what's pleasing to you, Father, and what benefits those who live and work in our beloved Coeur d'Alene. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can you give us the new pledge, please? I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, I don't believe we have any amendments to the agenda tonight, so we move on to consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of the con consent calendar, including resolution 17-052, approval of the purchase of one patrol vehicle and three unmarked vehicles for the police department, and approval of a lease agreement renewal with Brooks Seaplane. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Evans? Yes. Miller? Yes. Gukin? Yep. English? Yes. Motion carried. We are now on to public comment. Anyone wishing to address the council should have three minutes to do so on city business. Don't see anyone that wishes to make public co comment. So we'll move on to announcements. Any member of the council have an announcement? Dan, English, do you have any announcements? Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have one item I would like to reappoint Tina Johnson to the Arts Commission, so I'd be looking for council action. Move to reappoint Tina Johnson to the Arts Commission. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Now we'll move on to general services. We have resolution number 17-053. Approval of change orders one through three for the 2017 Open Trench Sewer Project with Big Sky Development. And we have Mike Becker here for presentation. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, uh, council members. Uh, before you is a staff report for a change order for the amount of $134,132.41. Um, this was for the asphalt paving, majority of this was for asphalt pavement on the open trench projects that was removed at the last minute on the bid and returned back onto the bid um, uh, after uh, the streets department was uh, um, reprioritized to take care of our, our roads after last winter. So um, like I said, the majority of this change order was uh, for all that road replacement um, there's a small portion of it that is also for adding three additional pedestrian ramps in the Fort Grounds area. Um, this was not a part of the original bid, and as you recall, we were going through a transition with the engineering staff, so this was overlooked. Um, with that, um, I'm here to answer any questions. Any questions for Mike? Dan. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mike, th and this is going to come up all the time whenever we do this. So. We're approving a change order that's already been changed. So how does that actually work? I know I've been through this before and I'll probably be do it again, but why you, you come to us and it's like, if we voted no, what happens? Well, that's a fair question to ask. Um, this was already accounted for. Majority of this was already accounted for. Uh, Councilman Gukin, um, we, wastewater utility was prepared to pay the streets department through interfund transfer for their work because the streets department had to reallocate their sources to repairing our roads from last winter's damage. Um, we went ahead and returned this back onto the contract amount. Um, 
in either direction, wastewater had already budgeted for this. And I understand your question is if you said no, what would happen? Um, we wouldn't make very many friends out there, but at the same time, it is, um, it was a, a, a fair, fair price, uh, and it was the lowest bid that would have been applied to this contract. So it kind of needed to get done in order to get the wastewater projects done before all the street projects took place this summer. Yeah, I understand that. It's just, it just seems weird to me that uh, it's like, why not come to us first? But then again, I, you know, I don't know why. So, I mean, I'm cool with it. It seems like it was, the money was there. We were going to do it one way or the other, but it just seems, you know, you come to us afterwards. Any further questions for Mike? So if there's no further questions, we'd be looking for council action. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 17-053, approval of change orders one through three for the 2017 open trench sewer project with Big Sky Development. Second. Second. Oh, we have a motion. It's probably before you, but. <laughs> yeah, time delayed. Dan we, should take it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Miller. Yes. Guggen. Yep. English. Yes. Evans. Yes. Motion carried. Now we move on to the manhole utility adjustment pilot test presentation. Mike again. Okay. Um, this uh, presentation was actually presented to General Services uh, last week, and uh, we've went ahead and we've kind of refined it. Um, the wastewater utility has uh, been fielding calls as well as City Hall on our rough road situation out there. We do realize that we have rough roads and uh, we were planning to do a pilot test this year and uh, here's what we're prepared to do about it. Um, we do know that we have some rough roads out there. Um, a lot of it uh, stems from just years of, of wear and tear, but there are other factors that also apply. In this slide, it refers to deterioration versus displacement. Deterioration is a result of the road just falling apart uh, through just wear and tear. Um, displacement is where we come in there and we do an asphalt patch and the material is actually l displacing around the manhole which ends up breaking up and uh, causing problems. This slide shows the sources of de deterioration and displacement. Uh, briefly, uh, under normal conditions, we can expect our roads just will wear. Uh, premature uh, deterioration displacement is often the cause of uh, quality of products out there, insufficient compaction, um, uh, unsuitable materials, uh, poor drainage, etc. So what the wastewater utility did about it uh, uh, in 2015 is we changed our standards to address these issues and we've been applying these standards. Um, however, this was just for new applications. Um, here's a list of some of the things that uh, were changed in the 2015 update. Now, presently, the city does diamond cuts, which is a square pattern around the manhole. And we have done round cuts, as this slide shows. The round cut that you see before you is, was done 17 years ago, compared to the slide that's uh, 10 years old off to the left. This, what we were noticing is that the square or diamond cut is creating greater problems out there than the round cut. It's also leading to damage done to the actual manhole ring and cover. Uh, we have found a process that will work in cutting uh, that round cut in a fraction of the time that it takes us to adjust our manholes presently um, using a, a round cutter that fits on a, a skidster similar to what's in this picture. Um, the cuts are made in minutes. Um, there's minimal impact to the community. And uh, from my understanding is we can essentially triple the number of adjustments in the same amount of period as what we're presently doing. Um, I've listed a, a price range of how much that it would cost to do this round cut per manhole. I've also provided a link to an example uh, found online uh, of the process of doing these round cuts. It's really an interesting process. If you have an opportunity to take a look at that YouTube video, I would encourage you. Um, 
Here are some examples of some round cuts. Presently, the city of Lewiston is doing this process, as well as Pasco, Kalispell, and um, a, a few other communities, such as Boise, in the Boise area, I'm sorry, are doing this round cut. Uh, I was able to find one example in Ames, Iowa, where they did it, replace that round cut with asphalt. Um, this can also be applied to water valves and storm drains. Um, oh, this pilot test was actually planned and budgeted last year for this year's fiscal year. Uh, what we're proposing to do was uh, procure a contractor that has the material to do this. Uh, we've already lined out numerous manholes, water valves, and storm drains. Um, we can even trim down those costs even further if the city provides other services. Um, we have seven communities and highway districts uh, interested in seeing this process. Wastewater is prepared to, to monitor the wear and tear on the utilities and the streets. Um, the action plan that will result from this pilot test is we will come back next year and we will present our findings to council. Make a determination on what options we should consider, whether or not we procure a contractor to do this or we procure the equipment to do this. With that, I will entertain any questions. Questions for Mike? Question. Dan English. Yes. Any, any questions? No, no, that okay. sounds good. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Good. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, we'll move on to a public hearing that we have tonight. It's a legislative hearing. It's the Community Development Block Grant Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report in review of its plan year 2016 and the annual action plan for plan year 2017. Renata's going to have that for us. Thank you. I'm in force tonight. <laughs> and I'll actually let Sherry have the first few moments while I bring up the sign-up sheet. I just wanted to say that it has been an honor to work with the city for the last five, almost five years, and it's, it was truly wonderful working with this program and with the citizens, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And, I'm going to go sit down. Okay. and with that, I just wanted to quickly introduce you to Michelle Cushing. She is our new hire that will be doing grant administration for the CDBG program. Hello, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and to have the opportunity to work on these funds and to work with Renata. Um, I've previous, previously worked with the Idaho After School Network, serving as an AmeriCorps for North Idaho, trying to bring more resources into after school. So I'm really excited to continue to work to support the community. Thanks. Thank you. All right, and I'll get to the meat of the presentation. So the city of Coeur d'Alene accepts CDBG funds annually from the federal government. There's a couple requirements that come along with that. One is a year-end report that we call the CAPER. Pretty much says, here's how we spent the money for that plan year. So this year we're presenting to you the 2016 year-end report called the CAPER. Additionally, we're required to do an annual action plan that sets forth how you want to spend your money and what sort of programming that you're expecting for your 2017 plan year. So we'll be presenting that to you as well. Um, those documents are due back to HUD no later than August 15th of this year. <coughs> Excuse me. It was required to have a 15-day public comment period. We did hold that open between July 17th and today. And we held a public community meeting on uh, July 24th. And we had approximately eight to nine people attend that meeting, which is about seven or eight more than last year. So we'll consider that a win. Uh, to date, we have not received any formal public comments. So nobody's written in with any public comment. We had a lot of questions and provided a lot of technical assistance at that forum. So I'll just give you a couple highlights of the year-end report. In 2016, we were awarded $310,681. So with those dollars, we were able to provide a grant to St. Vincent de Paul to acquire the Help Center building. We were able to provide assistance to 13 households with, uh, with an 11 more after the plan year ended. So that money is still available and we're still utilizing it. So it's 24 people that were available to get grants to provide that emergency minor home repair to their homes. We have approximately $3,500 left in the budget. 
Um, there's some money there allocated toward ADA sidewalks. We just haven't had a chance to coordinate with our busy street department for that. And we have some administrative dollars and some emergency minor home repair dollars that will be spent here shortly. <coughs> Excuse me. Additionally, during that plan year, we began allocations to the Lake City Center for their Meals on Wheels program. So that is the highlight for the year-end report. So for the annual action plan, we were allocated $301,850,000. That's approximately $4,671 less than last year. So it wasn't a substantial cut, and I think there was a lot of worries out there of what was going to happen with the program, and it's kind of staying status quo. Uh, the federal government did provide that information pretty late in the year. Our plan year actually started in April, so we are coming a little late to the game. So our plan for the year is to go ahead and take that 20% of administration available. We do have a new hire. We have some training. We're going to need to produce some additional brochures. This year, we're responsible to do an affirmatively fair housing action plan that's supposed to take a lot of community input. So we're going to be doing a little bit more outreach this year. Um, we did add in there some additional funding for the Boys and Girls Club in the amount of $83,000. It's kind of a carryover of that very odd thing that happened two years ago when somebody had to turn in some grant monies and we were trying to coordinate funding St. Mr. DePaul and the Boys and Girls Club. So we did that over several plan years. And then we have available of $90,880 for competitive community grants. So we'll be getting Michelle ready to start to do notice of available funding and such in the very near future for that. Again, we'll go ahead and fund Meals on Wheels in the amount of $3,000 the Emergency Minor Home Repair Program in $50,000, and then we're still allocating about $14,000 for ADA sidewalk repairs. And that is all I have for you today, so I stand for any additional questions before you accept public comments. Questions for Renata? Dan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Renata, um, so there was a lot of, of talk in the media and about Meals on Wheels. And the thing is, we do that, right? I mean, we are the ones who provide the funding to someone who provides Meals on Wheels. So the Lake City Center pr runs the Meals on Wheels program. Right. And so that's countywide. So we've provided them a $3,000 grant to provide assistance um, to that program for people that live within Coeur d'Alene. And we're not cutting that. We're not. No, no, no. That's, Good. That's, in the, that's in the proposed action plan. Good. Now, going on to... Uh, Boys and Girls Club, I know that came in late. Um, how do we set the percentage of that? So it wasn't a percentage. The request was actually for $120,000. So we already um, granted $37,000. So this would be the remaining of their request of one hundred and twenty. dollars And which of the council priorities does that fit into? Um, that would be still within that um, assistance to low to moderate income folks. So this goes to aiding those members um, that are children of low to moderate income families. So grants. Yes. Oh, sorry. Community block grant. This is part of No, that. but I mean that's what the kids get. The kids apply for a grant, then they can get into the club. No, this, this actually, the, the money went toward architect and engineering services for their new building. So we paid an architect with it. Yeah. They paid. We're reimbursing them. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm happy with that or not, but I'd be well, happier if we were giving money to low-income kids instead of high-income architects. Right. Yeah. The program doesn't allow us to pay for new construction, so this was one way to aid in getting the building actually built in our city without paying for construction. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Renata? Kiki. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could make a comment. Yes, you can, Dan. Okay, if you can hear me. I just, you know, I'm not there to see the documents right now, but going forward, um, I'm glad to hear that there will be an emphasis on the affordable housing. Um, being involved in the, with the seniors and actually with the training I'm getting just this week, that's a, a critical issue, especially for a... Um, kind of a high-cost property community like ours. Um, 
So I think any help, uh, any direction we can send it towards affordable housing is good. And also just a comment to reflect for Mr. Gukin that uh, the majority of the wheels on meals, uh, which is home delivered meals, comes through the Older Americans Act um, mm. and then through the area agency for the five northern counties. Um, kind of in perspective, we have a $1.6 million budget for the five northern counties, and by far the largest share is for the uh, home-delivered meals and congregate meals at senior centers. So I'm glad to see that uh, our portion is in there, and uh, I would support a larger portion, but that's just me. Thank you. Okay, Kiki. I had uh, a couple quick things. Uh, the new person who's on board is that which department is that being budgeted under administration or so it's actually its own sort of budget line item in the budget but it's managed under municipal services that's right so it's on the whole CDGB page yeah and um, so then you were talking about the 20% grant admin is that's where you're getting that payroll budget and then where is the the out this outreach material and advertising and I guess where I'm going with that is what is the plan to be able to let more than eight or nine people know about the availability of this grant coming up this year sure so part of the administrative dollars will be used for outreach um, generally we advertise it we send it to the stakeholders we have a list of about 120 emails we send it out to to local area nonprofits ask them to spread the spread the word um, but what I mean for additional outreach is uh, most of any of the brochures we have for emergency minor home repair all need to be reprinted with Michelle's contact information business cards any of the additional outreach we're going to be required to do for that fair housing action plan and we haven't come up with a final marketing, so to say, plan for that yet. Okay. And then just um, in your dramatic increase of attendees, who were some of the folks that attended and listened to what was available here this last time? Um, we had probably about four people representing St. Vincent de Paul programs, different pr area programs, um, Trinity Group Homes, uh, the Boys and Girls Club was represented. And there was one person, two people there that are concerned with some of the homeless population issues and funding for that. Okay, and so when's the time of year again? It went from public uh, notice was from the 17th until today, so it's about a two week period? We had a 15 day public 15 comment day. requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next um, cycle for this will be what dates then? Um, we haven't established the dates for the notice of available funding yet. We've okay. got to look at all of our process and procedure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm having Michelle review the point system and those sort of things at this point in time. But we're hoping to do that in September. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Renata? Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now open the public testimony portion of this hearing and invite anyone up that wishes to give public testimony. We have one person on the list, and he says he is fine with no public testimony, but he, Mike Kennedy is in favor of whatever he's in favor of. <laughs> so, the plan. <laughs> so we'd be looking for council action. <clears throat> oh, we're just gonna go into it, huh? Yeah, so we opened it. Yeah, up. I would uh, move to approve the Community Development Block Grant Consolidation Annual Performance and Evaluation Report Caper. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. What? We have to close the public. Hearing. We'll close the public hearing now. Yeah. I would like to move to approve the Community Development Block Grant Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report Caper, in review of its Plan Year 2016 and the Annual Action Plan for Plan Year 2017. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just uh, time-wise again, Renata, what's coming up next? So the next thing that we'll hopefully be noticing the community on will be the notice of available funding for those community development block grant funds, the $90,000 that will be available. Okay. And I just want to make sure then as a point of discussion that that is um, one of the new hires primary functions to make sure the community, so we're taking a different focus on outreach with the new person in to make sure folks who would be eligible know that those funds are available and when. Yes, and she's very excited to work with Sam on doing some exciting things. Very good. Thank you.
Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Oh, any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Renata. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, Dan. Yeah.